Hello there, AP Environmental Science class. Welcome to part one of my lecture on chapter nine, sustaining biodiversity, saving species, and ecosystem services. Uh, we're looking at about 52 slides. So once again, I will break this lecture into two parts, part one and part two, with part one beginning right now. So here we go, court case study, where have all the honeybees gone. Believe it or not, uh, at, at, at Cornell University, where I did my undergraduate work, I actually took a course called beekeeping. It was, it was one, of the, one of the best courses I ever took. Uh, we actually went out and uh, out to the bee farm every day for class, and we got to pet honeybees and, and make honey. And uh, it was really, uh, it, was an, it was an enjoyable semester, obviously, uh, when I was taking that class. So good stuff. So bees play a key role in pollination. Uh, European honeybees pollinate over 70% of the the vegetable and fruit crops out there. Commercial beekeepers actually truck hives to farms to actually pollinate different crops. That was one of the uh one of the things that the guy who uh, ran the course that I took at, at Cornell University on, on beekeeping, uh, that was one of the things he did in between uh, teaching. He would actually bring his hives out to uh, farms to help pollinate uh, the crops uh, on those farms. Well, what has happened over the past couple of years is something called colony collapse disorder. Uh, when this happens, all bees abandon their colony. No one really knows exactly why this happens. Uh, it has affected up to 43% of the European honeybees in the United States between 2008 and 2015. And obviously, uh, this is an ecosystem service, right? Honeybees, pollination. So when you have this uh, colony collapse uh, disorder, it obviously decreases the pollination out there. And European honeybee population has been cut in half over the past 50 years, which again, decreases the pollination of our crops. Why are some possible reasons? Parasites, viruses, pesticide use, stress from transportation and overwork, or maybe poor nutrition from pollination pollinating a single crop, that monoculture uh, that we'll talk about a bit more uh, as we go through the next couple of chapters. So um, again, important, this, this uh, chapter is about sustaining biodiversity. Uh, and unfortunately, what we're seeing with the honeybees is that we're not sustaining them as again, uh, their population has been almost cut in half already, or has been cut in half here uh, in the United States. And there is a picture uh, of our friend, uh, the European honeybee. So what role do humans play in the loss of species and ecosystem services? As well, as you can probably imagine, we unfortunately are playing a huge role uh, nowadays. So species are becoming ex extinct at at least 1,000 times faster than the historic, uh, historical rate. We've talked about it already in this class. This is why we believe we are in the sixth mass extinction currently because of that fact that we are seeing species become extinct at least 1,000 times faster than the historical rate. By the end of this century, extinction rates could be 10,000 times higher than the historical rate. What is biological extinction? Biological extinction occurs when a species can no longer be found anywhere on planet Earth. Now, extinctions are a natural process, but right now they are increasing sharply and five other times uh, throughout Earth's history, those mass extinctions uh, is when the uh, in extinction rate has uh, or increased rapidly. So again, extinction is a natural process. The background extinction measures the natural rate, which is about one extinct species per year per 1 million species. Okay. That's the natural background extinction rate. Again, we are a thousand times greater than that currently right now on this planet. And again, that's why we feel we are in the sixth mass extinction. What is a mass extinction? Extinction of many species in a short period of time. Past causes most likely involve global changes in environmental conditions. Uh, this one currently that we're in the sixth one uh, is because of us human beings degrading our ecosystem services uh, and degrading our natural capital and things like that. Mass extinction can be an opportunity for species to fill empty ecological niches. I would say we probably would not be here as humans if the dinosaurs didn't become extinct 65 and a half million years ago because by with the dinosaurs becoming extinct, that allowed little tiny mammals to be able to be the, become the dominant species on, that on this planet, which then eventually uh, led to the evolution of human beings. Human population, though, as I said, has destroyed and degraded habitats. 
huge resource consumption and a large ecological footprint. And this is why the extinction rate has risen recently. And again, current extinction rate, we think is right now estimated about a thousand times higher than that natural background extinction rate. Rate of extinction and threats to ecosystem services likely to rise sharply in the next 50 to 100 years due to harmful human impacts. Again, Extinction now a thousand times the natural background rate, but could get up to 10,000 times the natural background rate by the end of the century if we don't change things. And large scale loss of species would greatly impact ecosystem services that humans rely on. We touched on one, right? Honeybees pollinating plants. That's just one of countless amounts of ecosystem services out there. Biologically diverse environments are being eliminated or fragmented, and that is reducing our biodiversity. How do we estimate extinction rates? Well, there are problems in doing that, of course. Nothing is going to be 100%, and that's because natural extinction of a species is a long process, so it's difficult to document. We've also only identified about 2 million of the 7 to 10 million species we believe here on planet Earth, so we're not even documenting uh, more than half of the creatures out there, so we don't really know if they're turning extinct or not. Uh, we know little about ecological roles of most of the identified species, uh, so what do we need to do? We need to observe how reductions in habitat area affect extinction rates because, again, the more habitats we destroy, uh, the faster these extinction rates are coming. So um, endangered or threatened species are what we call ecological smoke alarms, right? What is an endangered species? We have endangered species is one that there are so few individuals left that the species could soon become extinct. A threatened species or a vulnerable species is a little bit uh, better than an endangered, but still not good. Uh, still enough individuals to survive, but the numbers are declining, may soon become endangered. Uh, and many species have characteristics that make them vulnerable to extinction. Many of these threatened species. So here are just examples of four critically endangered species out there. The Mexican gray wolf, only about 42 of them left. The California condor, but that's a little bit of a, of a, uh, of a success story. You'll notice in 1986, there were only nine California condors left on the planet. Now we have 225. So still, uh, still critically endangered here, but obviously a little bit better. Whooping crane, only 437 left, and the Sumatran tiger, 400 to 600 left um, on the Indonesian island of Sumatra. So these are, again, just examples of four uh, of our critically endangered species. And these are the characteristics that put species in a greater danger of becoming extinct. We talked a little bit about this uh, in previous chapters, that K-selected species, right, that basically has low reproductive rates, um, they tend to uh, 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 feed very high in the trophic level, things like that, or have a specialized niche like the panda, right, can only live in certain areas, narrow distribution of, of tolerance, all right, uh, feeds at the high trophic level, fixed migratory patterns like sea turtles, right, you destroy where the sea turtles migrate and they're not going to be able to uh, to to, uh, to to, to breed anymore. Um, rare, like the African violet or some orchids, there aren't, already, aren't many around to begin with. Um, commercially vi valuable and require large territories like, like that California condor. Uh, when we fragment those territories, obviously, um, that causes or threatens those species. So again, understand, you know these charts here, very important for FRQs, uh, for you to have some things to discuss and explain. So again, understand the characteristics here that are uh, that put species in a greater danger of becoming extinct. And then again, a couple of examples of creatures that have those characteristics. So definitely uh, understand this chart. It is a it is a good one. It's a good one to understand. All right, moving on. Why should we try to sustain wild species and the ecosystem services they provide? Well, uh, so many reasons, right? Reasons to avoid hastening the extinction of wild species. They provide valuable ecosystem and economic services. It can take millions of years for nature to recover from large-scale extinctions, and many people believe that species have a right to exist regardless of their usefulness to humans. That's the, uh, that's the morality uh, of environmental science that we've been discussing. So one of those creatures is the orangutan, right? Orangutan, uh, only about 61,000 remain in the wild um, because tropical forest habitats are being cleared to grow palm oil. 
or they are illegally smuggled and sold. They have the lowest birth rate of all animals. So again, gives them that characteristic, that case selected characteristic um, that threatens them to become extinct. Uh, and they may disappear within two decades without urgent protective action. So again, here's just again, another example. This is this is the uh, or orangutan. And again, just another example for you to use on FRQs or things like that um, of the uh, of the species that are endangered because of what we humans are doing to the environment. Species provide vital ecosystem services. So pollination, like we talked about, pest control, right? The spiders, for instance, eat insects, uh, oxygen production, another ecosystem services that species provide. Uh, many plants and animals provide economic value as well, like, like, like medicinal drugs. Extinction can hinder speciation. So when you become extinct, you actually hinder creating new species because you don't have a lot of the gene pool to start with because most of your animals on the planet have become extinct. So again, that's why mass extinctions aren't, aren't good and aren't what, what we want here. Many people believe species have an intrinsic right to exist. Again, that's the morality of it. Uh, which species should we protect and, and which shouldn't we? My advice is we should probably protect them all, right? If, if we can. Um, this is just, again, more example of natural capital. These, this is nature's pharmacy. Uh, I'm not going to try to, well, at least this one here, I'm not going to try to the Ravovia. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, but again, this helps with anxiety, high blood pressure. The foxglove um, helps with heart failure. Um, the rosy periwinkle, for instance, helps with Hodgkin's disease, et cetera, et cetera. So these, again, just natural capital that earth provides us, right? Uh, these are plants that can help with disease, right? You you end up getting have extinctions, not only of animals, but of plants. And unfortunately, you lose some of this vital natural capital. So that's why it's so important um, that we sustain uh, our biodiversity. Another reason is this um, macaw, right? Beautiful bird. Doesn't necessarily do anything for us human beings, but it is beautiful and it gives us pleasure to kind of look at it. So again, should we protect it? Should we not? That's the morality of it. My advice, let's protect everything by, again, being more environmentally friendly um, than uh, basically solves itself, right? All of our problems solve ourselves. Of course, easier said than done, as you've learned so far in this course, and as you, you will continue to learn, uh, it's a lot easier to say this stuff than to actually go out and do it because of what things we've talked about, like the morality, like cult, different cultures, and really like money, right? It all comes down to money. All right, how do humans accelerate species extinction and degradation of ecosystem services? All right, so greatest deaths, threats to species, Acronym HIPCO, please memorize this. This is a very important acronym to memorize. It's going to come up a bunch of different times throughout the course, and you'll probably need it on the big test in May. So HIPCO, what does it mean? Number one, threat to species. Habitat loss, degradation or fragmentation of that habitat. That's your H. I, invasive or non-native species. First P, population growth or resource use growth, right? Basically too many people on the planet. The other, the second P is, is pollution. The C is climate change. And the O is over exploitation or overuse. So these are the greatest threats to species that human beings are doing to accelerate the species extinction. The acronym is HIPCO. It pretty much goes from the first to the last. Habitat loss, invasive species, population growth, pollution, climate change, and over-exploitation. Definitely memorize HIPCO. Definitely memorize what the acronym means. You will definitely be using it on a test, uh, not only this test for this chapter, uh, but definitely uh, for the big chest coming up in May as well. Okay? Understand that. Again, these are the greatest threats that human beings are giving, or, or greatest threats to species from human beings, HIPCO, habitat loss, invasive species, population growth, pollution, climate change, and over-exploitation. So what is habitat destruction and fragmentation? Well, habitat fragment, you know what destruction is. Fragmentation occurs when large intact habitats are divided into smaller isolated patches. So let's say you have this forest and then you decide, okay, I'm going to build one house here and one house here on the forest. So you take this forest and you 
cut an area here to build a house, you cut an area here to be a house. Now that forest is fragmented. It has been divided into smaller or isolated patches. Again, could be caused by roads, logging, crops, or urban development, like I just explained. Uh, barriers limit the species' ability to disperse and colonize area, locate food, and locate mates. So when you unfortunately fragment these, uh, these biomes, basically, right, um, you basically then don't allow the creatures to move freely through its environment. And obviously that then causes trouble, meaning uh, they can't find food, they can't find mates, things like that. And so they potentially can become extinct. Here is just an example, some examples of you, all right, for you. So the Indian tiger range 100 years ago was all this purple. Today, they only live in these isolated red areas. Same thing for the black rhino and the African element, elephant and the Asian or Indian elephant. This is why these creatures are endangered, right? Their habitat has been so fragmented that they can only live in little areas. But what happens is, is this black rhino who lives up here can't mate with the black rhinos that live down here, right? They don't get down here. And so now you have these little pockets of creatures. And unfortunately, the food source ends up going away. Uh, the the, the, the uh, genetic diversity in the mating goes away, and that can lead to extinction of creatures. And that's why these four uh, are currently endangered because, again, of this habitat destruction and fragmentation. And here's just a picture of it. Again, this is kind of what I, I explained before. See this forest here, this entire area was covered in this forest. And then over time, the forest has been chopped down to build uh, – to. Uh, obviously farmland, homes, things like that. So you got a little forest here, a little forest here, but now the creatures that live in this forest up here can't get to down here. And so again, you have this problem of not being able to, to breed, not being able to find enough food, and that can obviously lead eventually to extinction uh, of those creatures. Again, not only animal creatures, uh, but plant creatures as well. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, that concludes part one of my lecture on chapter nine, sustaining biodiversity, saving species and ecosystem services. Make sure to watch part two. And as always, I thank you for listening.